right, everyone. Welcome to the STOA. Uh, today, we have some friends of the STOA uh, with us today. We have uh, Seishin Yasna from the Willow Monastic Academy, uh, Daniel Thornson from the um, Emerge podcast, also from the Monastic Academy, and our good friend, John Verveke. Uh, and uh, John and Seishin uh, and I used to belong to um, a bi-weekly circling group in Toronto, so it's good to have a portion of the gang back here at the, at the STOA. Um, and so Seishin started this thing called the Willow Monastic Academy, and it's a training center near a couple hours away from Toronto dedicated to developing the capacities of the human mind. Uh, they engage in rigorous mental, ethical, and interpersonal practices uh, grounded in uh, the Buddhist tradition. Um, and they've been featured on the STOA many times before. And today's session is a launch of a series and a collaboration between Monastic Academy and the STOA, um, and the Willow Monastic Academy, I should say. And today's session is harmonizing to emerge uh, a new ecology of practices. Uh, and we have a, a fun uh, a fun array of uh, activities for, for you today. Uh, and, and then eventually John, uh, Daniel and Seishin will have a conversation and today's 90 minutes in total. Um, and we'll be talking about the, the kind of the ecology of practices that the Monastic Academy, the Willow Branch is working on. And then on Monday, there's gonna be a six day uh, wake up challenge in chant meditation. I think it's at 5 a.m. Eastern time. I'll be there at least for the first session. Um, and then we're gonna get like a, an embodied taste of it uh, here at the, the STOA. And then I'll be visiting the STOA next weekend uh, for a session called Harmonizing to Emerge, uh, a Stoic at a Monastic Academy. And uh, we'll talk about my experience of being at the Monastic Academy. So uh, Seishin Yazan will be talking in a moment, but right now I'm gonna take uh, Nathan uh, and he's gonna lead us through uh, an exercise. Thank you, Nathan. That was lovely. Um... So, hello everyone, uh, I'm Seishin or Yasna, and I run um, the Canadian branch of the Monastic Academy for the Preservation of Life on Earth, Willow, uh, and I know that many of you are familiar with the work that we do, um, but I'll just kind of very quickly say that we're a modern uh, monastic institution. So, you know, not a, a traditional monastery, but heavily informed by monasticism and particularly Buddhist monasticism. And we train in a variety of practices, some ancient and some modern, all of which are intended to lead uh, to profound transformation and growth uh, so that we can become people who are more capable of facing some of the world's most dire problems. Uh, so the Monastic Academy in Vermont, which is our headquarters location, uh, has been around for about a decade. And uh, during that time, they've been working on this problem of developing an ecology of practices for this type of transformation and really looking at the best ways to present it, to teach it to newcomers in a way that will have a really lasting impact. Uh, so Willow is a new center. We've been officially, we've been around for about a year. Uh, which presents a really good opportunity for training newcomers. Um, so Daniel has been over the past year uh, or the past life, depending on how you look at it, uh, kind of developing a conceptual framework for some of these practices. And uh, so we decided to partner together. Um, Daniel and I are both teachers in the monastic academy system. Um, so we partnered to run a kind of three month experiment uh, at Willow, where we would bring a small group of people together and just teach them these practices from scratch, introduce this framework that he's created, and uh, live and train together for three months and see where it goes. Um, and we're about two months into those three months, and it's just been really wonderful, um, kind of blown away by the group and by everything that's uh, that's been happening here. Um, so I'm very excited uh, to have this conversation and to talk with everyone. Uh, and um, I think at that point, I can just pass it off to you and you can share a little bit about the model and what we'll be talking about. Sure, yeah. Thanks, Seishin. <clears throat> um, well, the first thing I want to say is just what a meaningful pleasure it is to be in this conversation, and especially in this conversation with you, John. Um, you know, you came on my podcast and I think, you know, Peter sent me your name and I think like linked me to the very first episode of Awakening from the Meaning Crisis like before it had even come out because he, he knew it was going to be great and um, it was at a time in my life when I was making the decision to come back to the Monastic Academy in Vermont 
and your work along with uh, Zach Stein's recent book, uh, Education in a Time Between Worlds, kind of like really clarified that decision for me. Um, and so it's, it's just uh, feels really significant to me that, that to be in conversation with you about this. Um, so I'll, I'll describe a little bit the model and the kind of um, origins of the model and framework that we're exploring here at Willow. As Seishin said, the Monastic Academy in Vermont is about a 10-year-old institution. And the way that I like to frame its mission is that it's um, an inquiry into what does a wisdom institution need to be to meet the demands of a planetary crisis in the context of Western civilization. And it's sort of like been experimenting and iterating and uh, over those 10 years, we've, you know, starting with something like a Genesis system that was close to Rinzai Zen, the founder of the Monastic Academy, Soryu Forall, uh, primarily trained in Japan, in Rinzai Zen tradition, but also in other monastic traditions, um, like the Ambedkar tradition in India, uh, and spending a little bit of time in the Tibetan tradition, but primarily it's Rinzai Zen, but also there was a little bit of, um, Shinzen Young sprinkled on top of it, which was, uh, if you don't know Shinzen, he's an incredible teacher. He's been on the Stoa um, and he's done a lot of work to kind of modernize and um, make palatable the world mystical traditions to the Western mind. Um, and so we started with this Genesis system and over the last decade, we've seen all the ways that it didn't quite meet the needs of people who were coming into the training space. Um, for instance, people now, I think perhaps more so than, you know, in Japanese history are coming in with a tremendous amount of developmental trauma that in some cases meditation can help resolve and move through, but in other cases it's actually not the right tool. Or another example is people come in and they have no idea how to have a good relationship with other human beings. They just like have never learned the skill set and the capacity to like be intimate and like trust another person. Um, or, and this is something that I think is probably the most tragic when I consider it, is that people come in and they don't actually like believe that there's such a thing as goodness. They don't believe there's such a thing as goodness, which in, in our system, that's like, uh, one of the premises of right view, right? That there is such a thing as goodness. There is such a thing as beauty and meaning. And many people come into the training and don't have the sense that those things are uh, real, that they're not 